This is an A2 pure video on parametric differentiation. Any of the differentiation we've done before is Cartesian. It's always y as a function of x or something like that. And parametric means that it is in terms then of a third variable, which we normally use then t. Um, sometimes we'd use a theta. Uh, so the two equations then x as a function of t and y as a function of t. For example, you know, x equals 3 over t or y equals the square root of 1 plus t squared, and so on. Um, in order to find dy by dx, because that's what we're going to be doing, we then need to use the chain rule. So we go dy by dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx. As with the chain rule, I always look like these. You know, the dt's look like they cancel there, so that gives me dy then over dx, and that's where it comes from. And from x equals f of t and y equals g of t, we can get, we differentiate this, we get dx by dt. Differentiate this, we get dy by dt. And to get the t by dx, which is what we need here, we flip this one upside down. Um, so let's take a look at an example here and see if we can get our head around it. Hopefully it makes a lot more sense for me to see the example done. So first of all, we have x equals 3 over t. I'm going to rewrite that one if we're going to be differentiating it. So that's the same as 3t to the minus 1. And differentiating that, then we're going to get dx by dt and that's going to give me minus 3t to the minus 2. And if I rearrange that then back to its original form you have minus 3 over t squared. Now the y one's messing up as well. Yeah, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 plus t squared all to the power of a half. I'm going to use a chain rule then for this to find dy by dt. Uh, so what do we do? We bring the half to the front. 1 plus t squared. I take away 1 from the power. Minus a half. And then I multiply, if you remember, by the uh, bracket differentiated. So that then is going to be 2t. Um, if we tidy this up, the half times the 2t is just going to give us a t at the front. 1 plus t squared all the way into the power of minus a half. And then I get finally write my dx by dt. Sorry, that's dy by dt. Apologies, dy by dt. Because they can bring that back down to the bottom. So it's going to be t over 1 plus t squared all to the power of a half. So we have to find dy by dx. If you look up above... Um, dy by dx is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. dy by dt we have just here. So it's going to be t over 1 plus t squared. You can just about still see that. That's okay. And then dt by dx is going to be this turned upside down. It's 1 over this. Hopefully that makes sense because we have dx by dt here. We want dt by dx. So we're going to flip it upside down. It's going to be t squared all over minus 3. Um, so we're more or less there. Let's work down a bit so we can get a bit of space. We're multiplying two fractions here. Top times top gives us t cubed all over 3 upon 1 plus t squared all to the power of a half. And there's a minus there. So I'm just going to bring then that minus out the front. So that's our first example there. Um, let's see if we look at example 2. Quite awkward ones here as well, but we will get there. Find the gradient of a curve given parametrically as x equals t over t plus 1, t cubed over 1 plus t at the point where t equals 1. So we want the gradient of the curve, so we want dy by dx. Um, so we're going to have to first of all try and find um, dx by dt here. So to find dx by dt, annoyingly, we're going to have to use the quotient rule because this is going to be a quotient. So let's set these out separately. We're going to have u, which is t, and we're going to have v, which is t plus 1. Both nice and straightforward here um, because du by dt is going to be 1 and dv by dt, if you differentiate this, then it's going to be 1. dx by dt is going to be v du by dt, so it's v times du by dt, t plus 1. 
and then minus u dv by dt. So that just gives you a t. And then it's all over v squared, if you remember the formula. So there's my v there. The v squared then is t plus 1 all squared. dx by dt then. t plus 1 take away t. That's just going to be a 1 on the top. And t plus 1 all squared then on the bottom. So about a quarter of the way there. That's my dx by dt we've just worked out. We now I need to work out dy by dt. Again, this is a quotient. I'm going to let u equal t cubed. I'm going to let v equal 1 plus t. du by dt is going to be 3t squared. dv by dt is straightforward enough. We differentiate this. And we just then end up with 1. dy by dt is going to be v du by dt, so that's going to be 3t squared upon 1 plus t, take away u dv by dt, take away t cubed. And that then again is all over v squared, so that's 1 plus t all squared. Um, trying to tidy this up then slightly. What are we going to have? Multiplying this out, we're going to have 3t squared plus 3t cubed minus t cubed all over 1 plus t all squared. I think that seems right. Tidying that up, 3t squared plus 3t cubed. Yeah, that's okay. So we're going to have 3t squared plus 2t cubed all over 1 plus t all squared. Uh, so where are we here? We are now about to work out dy by dx. dy by dx is going to be dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. dy by dt is this. 3t squared plus 2t cubed. Then maybe we should factorise that, but we'll worry about that in a second. 1 plus t all squared. And multiply then by dt by dx. So we have dx by dt here, and so we flip that upside down. So we're going to have t plus 1 all squared all over 1. Um, this tidies up nicely, actually, that's good news. 1 plus t squared is the same as t plus 1 all squared. I hope we've written those the right way around. Sorry, I should have written that. No, we're okay. Um, and we end up with that. 1 on the bottom. So we simply have then 3t squared plus 2t cubed. That's our dy by dx. And we are asked then to find that whenever t is 1. So whenever t is 1... dy by dx equals 3 times 1 squared which is 1 plus 2 and my answer for that then is going to be 5. So far so good. Example 3. Find the equation of the tangent to the normal at the point where t equals 2 on the curve given parametrically as this. Okay. Let's go. We can do this one a few different ways. We could use the quotient rule. I'm actually going to bring it up to the top and change it to the power of minus 1. So I'm going to go for x is t squared minus 1 all to the power of minus 1. dx by dt. Then bring my minus 1 to the front. So minus t squared minus 1. Take away 1 from the power. Minus 2 multiplied by the bracket differentiated. We end up then with 2t. That's going to give me minus 2t upon t squared minus 1 to the power minus 2. And then bring it back down to the bottom. We'll have a minus 2t on the top. And then t squared minus 1 all squared down on the bottom. Uh, y is t cubed minus 4t. So dy by dt, differentiating this is going to give me 3t squared minus 
4. And dy by the axiom is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. dy by dt is 3t squared minus 4. And then we need to multiply by dt by dx. Same plan as before. We need to flip this upside down. So we want dt by dx. This is dx by dt. So we're going to multiply that by then. t squared minus 1 all squared all over minus 2t. Uh, not really much we can do with tidy that up. Let's go for 3t squared minus 4 all over t squared minus 1 all squared all over minus 2t. Um, we want to find out whenever t is minus 2. Um, so whenever t is minus 2, um, we're going to sub that in here. Uh, so whenever t is minus 2, goodness me, we have a bit of a palava here to work out. So minus 2 is going to be 4. That's going to be 12 take away. I think that's 8. Uh, and t is minus 2. 4 take away 1 is 9. Is it? I hope I've got that right. All over minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. So that then gives us 18. So what have we worked out? We've worked out the gradient whenever of the tangent. Um, whenever <laughs> whatever <laughs> we've worked out the gradient of the tangent at that particular point. And the gradient of the tangent at that particular point is that. Um, I hear this question a wee bit where find the equation of the tangent to the normal at the point. Uh, let's just work out them both. Why not? Um, so equation of tangent. Um, whenever t is minus 2, uh, whenever t is minus 2, we can work out our values for x and y. So whenever t is minus 2, x is going to be, is that a third? So what have I done there? I've subbed in t is minus 2 into here, and I've got x as a third. And y, whenever t is minus 2, that's going to give me minus 8 plus 8. So it's going to give me 0. Straightforward enough to work out. Equation of tangent, then y equals mx plus c. 0 equals 18 upon a third plus c. That gives me c is 6. So the equation then of the tangent is y equals 18x take away 6. For the equation of the normal, um, the gradient then of the normal is going to be, if the gradient of the tangent is 18, the gradient of the normal is going to be minus 1 over 18. So we're going to have y equals minus 1 over 18x plus c. 0 equals minus 1 over 18 upon a third plus c. That gives me c is 1 over 54. So my equation then, you can still see me here, can you? Just about. y equals minus 1 over 18x plus 1 over 54. And maybe rewriting that one then would be... 54y equals minus 3x plus 1. So that's where we are with that. Um, particular care needs to be taken whenever finding the second differential from a parametric equation. You don't just differentiate the thing again. You need to use this wee formula here. And it's a little bit messy. You've never come up with it in a million years. But if you kind of look back to first principles, you can kind of see how it works. So I'm just going to come up with a wee example here. We'll work through that and then that'll do us. Um, so to find d2y by dx squared, we need to differentiate dy by dx with respect to x. However, we have dy by dx in terms of t. So d2y by dx squared is d by dt by dy by dx multiplied by d by dx. What does that mean? Once you get your dy by dx, you differentiate it and then you multiply it by d, d by dx again. 
um, and that'll work out for us. So here's our example. Um, if x is 1 over t and y is 3t squared plus 2, we're going to find dy by dx and d2y by dx squared. Um, x is 1 over t, that means x is t to the minus 1. Differentiating, we get dx by dt minus t to the minus 2, or if you want, minus 1 over t squared. y is that, so dy by dt is a nice straightforward one. Differentiating this, we get 6t. We want dy by dx. dy by dx is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. dy by dt is 6t. And then it's going to be 1 over this. So it's actually a minus t squared. Yeah, 1 over 1 over 1 over minus t squared gives us that. Uh, and so that gives us minus 6t cubed. That's our dy by dx. d2y by dx squared, then this is our new bit. Oh, it's a bit weird. d2y by dx squared is d by dt of dy by dx. Again, looking from the weak formula just up here, I'm just taking it straight from here. dy by dx for us is minus 6t cubed. So we're going to differentiate that with respect to t. Minus 6 cubed and then you multiply that again by dt by dx once you have that it's reasonably straightforward differentiating sorry i made a mistake again that's minus 6t cubed uh, so differentiating that we multiply that by that so we get minus 18 take away one from the power t squared multiplied by dt by dx or dt by dx we worked out here it was a minus t squared we are nearly there. That's going to give us minus that times minus that. Gives us 18t to the power of 4.